You're watching Carolina and Company Live. With your host, Cecil Chandler. Your source for fun entertainment and events. If it's happening in the area, it's on Carolina and Company Live. And hello, everybody. It is Wednesday. That means it's hump day, and uh, we're going to tell you everything that's going on in the area. Believe me, there's a lot happening because on Carolina and Company Live, this is where you find out what's going on. If you've just moved to town, you need to watch this show because we tell you everything that's happening. The PD area, the Myrtle Beach area, everywhere. Uh, we got a great show lined up today. We've got some old radio guys on the show with us, and uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about a one-man show. we got the coach of the Pelicans on today, and we're going to talk about McDonald's and what they did for help for kids. Unbelievable. A big fun thing. They had a fundraiser going on for them. All that's coming up plus a lot more today, but right now I know you want to find out what's going on with the weather. And welcome back. It's Wednesday. Of course, that's hump day. You make it through the day. You can make it all week long. I know a lot of people, they don't work but one or two days. Some of my friends, you know. All right, let's find out a little bit about today. It's Wednesday, January 6th, and this is National Smith Day. You give everybody a hug that is named Smith. Okay. And it's also a good day to listen to rock and roll music. You better believe that. I'm always listening to that. All right, birthdays today, 1953, Malcolm Young. He's 63 years old, a guitarist, uh, co-founded the rock band ACDC. And he's also in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and uh, he hasn't had a haircut in a while. 1955, Rowan Atkins. He's uh, 61. Never say never again, rat race, and uh, he's considered one of the 50th funniest actors in British comedy. 1970, Julie Chen, there she is, 46 years old, a host of Big Brothers and The Talk, started news with CBS in 1990. Today in history, let's go back. The Beatles in 1968. Uh, their magical mystery tour album goes all the way to number one. And in 1975, Wheel of Fortune debuts, of course, with TV's Vanna White, of course, from North Myrtle Beach. All right, from the know-it-all department today, if you know the answer, just holler it out, okay? It doesn't make any difference in this show. What is the longest-running game show on TV? Jeopardy. No. Anybody? No. Don't know. I can't. Oh, is, the, the Price is Right. Who said it? You are right. The Price is Right is the longest running. Listen to this now. Uh, it's The Price is Right. started in 1956. I remember seeing Bob, uh, Bill Cullen. It was Bill Cullen, I think, that did that. And then uh, the host uh, came, Bob Barker, and now they got Drew Carey. But it's been on since 1956. The Price is Right. I can't believe you missed that, Woody. All right, that's from the Know It All Department today. We got a great show lined up coming up in just a few minutes. We're going to talk some old radio guys. Radio guys never die, they just kind of fade out. You know what I'm talking about? We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. And welcome back to Carolina and Company Live. It's a Wednesday, and you know, I love radio. I started radio back in 1968, moved on to television, but there are a lot of guys that stay in radio all their lives. And I'm talking about the Wyndham Boys, right here from Wyndham's Crossroads in uh, up near Lamar, South Carolina. Now, y'all started in radio a long time ago. In fact, I worked with Woody back in 71 at WCOS before he fired me. We'll talk more about that. <laughs> now, 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 now you guys are doing internet radio. I mean, tell me a little bit about that, Leo. We are. We actually have two different internet radio stations. Yeah. One of them is Crossroads Radio. And then Woody has his own uh, I Woody radio. And uh, we're getting ready to get back together. We're putting the band back together, man. We the are Woody, putting, Woody, yeah. Wind, Wyndham Brothers. Yeah, you know, we're going to get that show out. a long time. We're both going to be on at the same time every morning. Every morning. On both radio stations. Wow, y'all going to get up early? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot you can record this on the internet. No, 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 no you're going to do live. It'll be live. It'll be live. You can, you can call in, be on the show. Yeah, all right, that's cool. Now, y'all did the show down in, let's see, Charleston. Y'all, you were in Columbia for a while. I mean, where all have y'all been with the Woodham? Well, of course, Woody was at WCOS, and he yep. hired me when I was in college. And then uh, we were on WCOS FM. Then we went to Charleston and opened a radio station called The Breeze. Beach I remember. Blues, you know, so. I remember We've that. We've been around the block a time or two. If we went through the whole history, 
<laughs> Take you all wouldn't day. have time for this show. <laughs> That's right. I know. Well, what's so great about it? I worked at COS. I was doing the night show, and uh, Woody would come on in the mornings after me. But uh, <laughs> he fired me, and it's not unusual to get fired in radio. How many times have you been fired in radio, Woody? Every station I ever worked for. That's, I mean, that just happens, doesn't it, Leo? That's true. That's, that's really true. Especially I, if you're making money. Yeah. Well, I wasn't making any money. I was just doing part time right then. But uh, you know, here's something that gets me. Nowadays, you don't have to have a third class license to do radio, do you? No, you don't. You don't. You don't have to go take that test. I still got one. I got one. I, yeah. I have one. And my friend, uh, you know, Hunter Herring in Columbia, we were going to school together. It took him three times. Yeah, I know. Three <laughs> times to pass that. He worked for three Ele years without one. I know it. Element <laughs> 9. I know it. He didn't pass Element 9. But this is so cool, though, doing it. Now, what kind of music are you playing on yours? Beach Boogie and Blues. Wow. And okay. then Woody, that's a nightclub called uh, The Woody, believe up, it or not. Up in Columbia. And, it's, and uh, we're, we play everything that's uh, hip and, and new. And huh. Exciting! You play the new stuff. We play uh, Iggy Azalea. Yeah, I can't. I really can't get into that, Woody. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm. I, my wife said I'm still in the fifties and sixties. Only Come thing on. you know about Iggy is pop, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I can't get into all that. So the unique thing about it is we yeah. have two different internet radio stations, yeah. and uh, then we're going to get together and do the Wyndham Brothers show, which will probably be a lot of talk. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I can stop him and we can play a song. Can you, once in a while? Yeah, every now and then. But, all right. Uh, so you got one of them right there. Uh, I just saw myself on television. You, <laughs> you know, you're 75 years old. You cut yeah. your own hair. Yeah, I know it. I, yours looks good, though. <laughs> he did a lot on that. Hold you can, on a second. When you're 65, it, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you can catch these guys on the radio on the Internet. Check them out. If you need to know more about them, you get in touch with me because I promise you, you'll enjoy listening to them. I listen to Leo sometimes at night when I'm just playing with the Internet. Yeah, you do. We used to do I this all the time. Right? Hi, this is Woody. And this hey. is Leo. The, the Wyndham Wyndham Brothers. Brothers. That's it. <laughs> all right. There we go. WCOS, one of the old microphones. There you are out front of the station. Man, we were young. Oh, man. young guys. All right. Thank you so much for being here, guys. We got a lot more coming up. You stay with us. And welcome back. All right, we got a lot more coming up on the show today. All right, uh, the Merle's Inlet Community Theater is uh, getting ready to present Bill Oberst doing Mark Twain and the Los Angeles based actors from Georgetown. And uh, he's known for his one man shows. And Bill's with me now. The event's coming up uh, January 23rd and 24th. And Bill, this is a, this is a pretty neat little show with you doing Mark Twain. You ever do any theater, Cecil? Never did theater. One you'd, time you'd I did good. one time I did maybe a five minute thing, but that was it. You'd be good, man. I enjoyed. It. I think I would enjoy. It. This but you mean this is good for you? You do this one man thing. How do you do a one man show? Well, uh, primarily I kill people on movies and television, so this is a really <laughs> nice break. From out in Los Angeles, I get sidecast as a killer, but uh, this show I do Louis Grizzard and I also do Mark Twain, and in both cases they're great Southern writers. And this is like an evening with them. And I haven't been to the new Merle's Inlet Community Center. And I love Merle's Inlet. I grew up in Georgetown, and I wanted to do the show. So they asked me to come and do a show. And I hadn't done Twain in 10 years. And I said, I wonder if the suit still fits. And the suit <laughs> fits, so I took it as a, as a sign from God that look I should there, do the show. There. So we're doing it January 23rd, 24th. We've got a Saturday night, 8 o'clock, and a Sunday, too. Well, that's pretty good. Now, Gazard, I got to interview him probably, gosh, 25 years ago. Yes. Super dude. Very nice, off the cuff, always casual, easygoingest guy I think I'd ever met. I played Lewis for his family since 1999. It's been a great joy. And um, I think that he and Mark Twain are, have a lot of similarities. Both of them were able to say what people were thinking <laughs> but couldn't say. And he could make you laugh and cry at the same time. Twain is funny, and he's a cynical old bastard. He's a lot of fun to play. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, the guard told me when I finished the interview with him, he said, you know, you're a little uptight. You need to take a break. You know, I had another interview to go do and all that stuff. And I said, you know, you're right. That's what I need to do. But this is fun. Now, you've been doing theater and all for how long now in movies? I've, I've been doing theater from the beginning of my career. I did theater 12 years, touring theater. Then I went out to Hollywood thinking that I would do historical characters, which I love to do. Yeah. But uh, they have two, there's two settings for men in Hollywood, Cecil. Uh-oh. Beautiful and scary. <laughs> so I fall in the scary category, so I get cast as a killer on Criminal Minds and about 100 horror movies. But I still do my theater whenever I can, and I'm home for Christmas. And That's so before good. I go back to L.A., I wanted to do a local show, and the Merle's Inlet Theater asked me to do this. And, and I hope people will come out and enjoy Mark Twain. All right, now that's good. We were talking about radio a minute ago, and I understand you worked at WCOS also? I worked at every radio station. I was fired from every one of them. <laughs> it was, always happens. That was back in the old days when if somebody lost a dog, they could call the radio and station. We'd talk and we'd about say, it. there's a lost dog out on Wyndham Road. <laughs> and somebody would call in and say, I think i seen that dog. 
Those are good days. That was good days there. All right. Now, your yeah. show's coming up January 23rd, 24th, uh, 8 p.m. on Saturday night, 2 p.m. on Sunday. And that, That's of right. course, is uh, down at the uh, Merle's Inlet Community Theater. Under the yeah. Oaks. Thank you for being here, man. Yeah, man. Thank All you, All right. Susan. We got a lot more coming up. Stay with us. And welcome back. All right, you are looking at the Mills Cup. And right now, the Pelicans here in Myrtle Beach are the defending champions. And coming up, they are going to get a new coach. How about that? Now, the manager of the Pelicans is here with me. Andy's with me now. And uh, the new coach is coming. Uh, what's his uh, Buddy? Buddy Bailey. Buddy Bailey. All right, now, when's he coming in and So, all? Buddy will get in about three or four days before our season starts. Uh, he's down in Venezuela where he's a manager in the Winter Leagues down there, and that's actually where he lives in the off season. And um, he'll report to spring training in the uh, end of February with the rest of the, the players and uh, coaches. And then he'll come to town three or four days before season starts and uh, get settled in and get ready to go. All right, now what's the season looking like? You got some good guys coming back, or what you got? Yeah, I think we'll have a, a really good club. Um, you know, last year's club had won two consecutive championships, first in the Midwest League and then here. So we're hopeful we'll be able to uh, continue that success. But uh, Glaber Torres is the top prospect in the Cubs minor league system, one of the best young shortstops in the game. He came up with us at the end of the year for the championship. He'll be back with us. Uh, Jeffrey Baez, a really um, top prospect in the outfield for the Cubs, will be there. So we should have a really good, young, exciting team. And uh, Buddy's been at it for a long time, has almost 2,000 wins in professional baseball. So, so he's going to be the man. Now, this is the seventh. I think this is the seventh coach, I think. I think that's what I wrote down. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. uh, seven coaches and managers in the Pelicans history, um, and uh, one of which will be back in the Carolina League, Rocket Wheeler from uh, right here on the Grand Strand. He's going to be leading the Carolina Mudcats this year. I remember him. I do. All right, now the, the Pelicans have been around since 1999, Correct. right? Correct, yes. So this is your eight, 17th season starting? Going into 17, yes. All right, now looking at a team that has come to Myrtle Beach, you know, they have been very successful. Yeah, it's been an incredible uh, run. I, I, this will be my fourth season, um, which will be the longest serving uh, general manager in the team's history. So, um, you know, we're excited about the progress we've made, what we've been able to do in terms of get, giving back to the community, getting involved in the community. And um, it's, it's been a lot of fun. The community's responded with great support. We're coming off two consecutive years with record attendance, and uh, it's been a great place to be. We've really enjoyed it. Well, that's what's so great. The Pelicans are always doing something for the community. Fundraisers, fun events at the stadium that brings in a lot of people to come see the games. Th that's really what it boils down to. The Pelicans are the community's team. Um, we look to give back every opportunity we can. The, the help for kids and the other people in this community that we can get involved with and help make a difference by being here is really what it's all about. And um, if we can do that while developing big league players for the Cubs and bring a world championship to Chicago, then uh, that's the icing on top of the cake. So right now you're kind of working on the field getting everything ready? Yeah, we're knee-deep in sales, sponsorships, season tickets, group outings and company outings, those types of things we're, we're uh, uh, heavily involved in right now and planning our promotions and the different things that will take place this summer. So um, we have 93 days until opening day and the fun will begin. <laughs> All right, Andy, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, I Cecil. I do appreciate it and hope you can come back with another Mills Cup this year. It would be great. Absolutely. All right, stay with us. we got a lot more coming up. Coming up next, we're going to talk about McDonald's and what they've done for help for kids. And welcome back to Carolina and Company Live. Everybody knows what this is, is a Happy Meal from McDonald's. And let me tell you, back in April, they started a program with Help for Kids. And uh, what's so amazing, buy one, let me see what it's called, like buy one, give one Happy Meal. And, and that, was, that was just so neat. I'm, I'm telling you, this is, this is amazing. Mary, tell me a little bit about it, how sure, y'all did this. Sure, sure. So this is a program that the owner operators in the coastal area put together. Uh, we partnered with Help for Kids and about seven other local charity partners around the coastal Myrtle Beach area all the way up into Wilmington. And uh, for every Happy Meal sold on the first Monday of the month, uh, we started as a summer program starting in April, uh, we would give a Happy Meal away to a child uh, in need. And now y'all did unbelievable. I'm talking about this four months. Tell them how many. 
Uh, over 40,000 Happy Meals. God, wow, that is amazing. And this made, you know, Margaret, this made such a big deal for Help for Kids. It absolutely did. It came at a perfect time for us. Because as you know, we're Help for Kids Backpack Buddies, so we put food in the child's backpack every Friday so they can eat on the weekends. But what happens to the children in the summer? Well, we do the best we can by getting sandwiches out there, driving them out to different neighborhoods maybe three times a week. But this Happy Meal program came in really handy because what happened was now we've got over 4,000 meals that we gave out from McDonald's to our kids in the summer so they had that extra mile that they could go 40 40,000 4,000 right? 4,000 4, 4, yeah. just, oh, just to help for kids just to help for kids to our kids wow that yeah. is amazing now Mary y'all looking at maybe doing this again next year I think so I mean we definitely want to look to partner with them again I mean the program was a success so it's something that we will definitely consider all right now Margaret how many people do kids do y'all feel you know feed a week we feed about 2,500 to 3,000 a week depending on the time of year and what yes and so that's about as we feed them every week 10 months a year now, this is amazing for the weekend. Y'all actually try to give them food also. And it takes a lot to do this, and all of y'all are volunteers. All volunteer, 100% volunteer organization. No one takes a paycheck. So anything that gets done through that organization is done by just people and their time and their graciousness coming out to help these kids. All right, I'm sure you're looking for volunteers or money or something to help with this. How can they send something or find out more about this? You can, uh, you can go on uh, the website, our website, and okay. you can... Check on there, and there's a donation button on there. You can call the number at the office, and you can make a donation that way. Okay. We always have food drives. We're always looking for volunteers to come out and help us with our food drives. Um, there's always something that we could we could use you to do. You do your office. food drives at Walmart, right? We do our food drives great, at Walmart, and great. this um, on the 16th of January, we're going right. to start a new one at the North Myrtle Beach Walmart. Oh, that's cool. So we're cool. going to be up there, and uh, we're going to be up there from 9 to 4:30. So come on out and support us. So they can go to helpforkids.com to find out more information, right? Correct. Is that right? Okay. We thank you. Thank McDonald's thank you so for much. all they did, too. We had a great time today. Thank you all for being on the thank show. You. Thank and, you. And, uh, Catherine, stay in touch with everything for Help for Kids. We love helping you. Thank all you. All right, everybody, look right here and tell them bye. We'll see you tomorrow. Wave bye at bye. them. Bye-bye. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching.